Hello everyone and welcome back to English with Kaylee. In today's video we're going to analyse another one of Ted Hughes's poems entitled The Harvest Moon um, and this appears on the, the GCSE syllabus. Um, so let's get started. So let's first read through the poem, then we'll discuss a brief summary, the themes, and then we'll do our stanza by stanza analysis. So the harvest moon. The flame red moon, the harvest moon, rolls along the hills, gently bouncing a vast balloon till it takes off and sinks upward to lie on the bottom of the sky like a gold doubloon. The harvest moon has come, booming softly through heaven like a bassoon, and the earth replies all night like a deep drum. So people can't sleep, so they go out where elms and oak trees keep a kneeling vigil in a religious hush. The harvest moon has come. And all the moonlit cows and all the sheep stare up at her petrified while she swells filling heaven as if red hot and sailing closer and closer like the end of the world till the gold fields of stiff wheat cry we are ripe reap us and the rivers sweat from the melting hills Okay, so a brief summary of the poem. So we see that the full moon has arrived and it almost bobs through the hills like a, a huge balloon. It sits like an ancient gold coin on the horizon and it creates a sound that makes the earth almost shake and vibrate like the beating of a drum. It wakes up the people of the earth and they are seen wandering and kneeling down in prayer. Then we get to see the animals, a key piece of, it's something that is very key in, in Ted Hughes's works. He often refers back to nature and animals, especially in this particular collection for the exam. They are very fearful of the expansive moon and it approaches Earth like a looming apocalypse. And finally, the vegetation calls out that they are ready to be harvested. So quite a few themes in the harvest moon then. So the first one being that seasonal change and disruption. We also get this, this juxtaposition of the, the fear that comes with it, but also the awe. Um, and finally the death and finally death in considering the apocalypse. Okay, so let's do a stanza by stanza analysis. So stanza one, I've split into two sections just because it's um, it consists of eight lines. So the flame red moon, the harvest moon, rolls along the hills, gently bouncing a vast balloon. Um, so this particular poem was written for children. Um, and that's very telling when we think about what image is created about the moon in the first instance. It is like a balloon, so a very playful um, image is created within the first few lines of the stanza. Um, and that is also continued at the end of the stanza, like a gold doubloon, um, which is an, an old Spanish coin, which oft is often linked to pirates and treasure. Um, so we think about that, that simile that plays on this idea of, of treasure. And, and in this case, how it's sinking, because in the previous line, we see it sinks upwards. Um, and then that oxymoron there of something sinking upward is the first suggestion that something is not quite right. Um, so even within the first stanza, we very quickly start to understand something is something is amiss. <clears throat> so we have quite a ra rapid change from metaphor to simile. So at the start, we've got the flame red moon um, and that it rolls along the hills here. So we've got this metaphor and then it changes very quickly to like a gold doubloon. Um, and that shows the very much the rapid change of the moon itself. Um, which can symbolize change, um, and especially within the with, within the situation of the harvest moon and what it brings about and how quickly it brings it about. We have some rhyme here, so we've got moon, balloon, doubloon, um, 
which which is quite playful again mimicking that bouncing of the moon as it rises through through the sky so we move on to line six to eight of the same stanza um and we have this this lovely short sentence here the harvest moon has come um a very celebratory statement it's shown in all its glory as it's finally ascended to the to the top of the sky um but again, we come back to this oxymoron, another oxymoron in the first stanza, this booming softly. Again, there's a subtle, unsettling feeling, mood and tone that's created. Booming softly through heaven. Um, and we consider the word heaven. How does this juxtapose with the opening sentence again in the same stanza uh, where we've got the flame red moon? Um, so we could be talking here, we could be looking at this idea of, of heaven versus hell, good versus evil. Um, and, and of course, the story becomes much darker as we move through the poem when we discuss the apocalypse and death. Um, so is this an early reference to, to what is to come? Um, we have another simile, like a bassoon, um, and, and we get these acoustics here. So, you know, one thing calls and the other responds or replies, meaning that that relationship between nature um, and the earth uh, and mother nature. And the earth replies all night like a deep drum. So we've got this alliteration of the D sound and of the booming, the bassoon, the deep drum, um, which really seems to act as, as a warning that danger is approaching. So this part starts to feel very apocalyptic um, and, and obviously a, there's a sense and there's a nod to a religious allegory in considering the, the end of the world and the apocalypse. So stanza two, we have quite an episodial structure throughout the poem. So in stanza two, we see the, pe the, the people's reaction to the moon and its effects on those people. So it starts with the anaphora of so people can't sleep, so they go out where elms and oak trees keep. Um, and this really, sent, this really gives the sense of, you know, this driving home of the message that people are impacted by the change. Um, and we see that reference to the Bible as well in its, in its own structure um, and how it's written. A kneeling vigil. So we have this personification of the trees here. Um, and the connotations are of keeping watch and, and mourning as well. So mourning loss. And that is potentially the summer that, that they are losing. Um, but in a darker twist and in a darker sense, it could also be about the, the end of the world that is coming. In a religious hush. So again, we come back to this idea and this nod to religion, praying, kneeling, um, and, and observing this strange episode that has that is unfolding before their eyes. The harvest moon has come. Now we see this line repeated in stanza one, but in stanza two, there seems to be a bit of a shift in tone here. Um, the realization that it is something to be awed and it is incredible, emphasized by the exclamation mark, but also something that is that is feared. Um, and, and that really highlights the, the speaker's emotion to, to, to seeing this um, in front of them. So stanza three, it moves on to the animal's reaction to the moon and its effects. Um, and all the moonlit cows and all the sheep. Uh, so these are, of course, the farm animals traditionally um, these animals are taken to the slaughter before winter. So it, in that layer, when we consider a layered analysis, it's also about what's to come in their future, you know, because death is looming for them. They stare up at her petrified, um, which could be very literal and or symbolic as well, you know, in, in physically looking up and seeing this grand flaming red moon, um, but also that metaphorical and that symbolic fear of what is going to come. 
stares up at her petrified while she swells, filling heaven as if red hot. Um, hints at a very supernatural transformation here, something so far outside of this world. Um, and filling heaven. Uh, so we've got that biblical Armageddon. Um, and, and if we look into the book of Revelation, it shows a fiery red moon resulting in the second coming of Christ. Um, and so the animals here might also allude to Jesus' birth in the Jerusalem Inn. And of course, this ends with the end of the world, which once again just echoes and references that idea of the, the Armageddon. So we move to the, the final stanza, stanza four. It's the shorter stanza uh, within the poem, just consisting of three lines of tercet. Um, and this moves to the landscape um, and how the landscape views and, and interact with the event of the harvest moon. Um, so we see this, the anthropomorphism, um, and this is where, you know, inanimate objects are given the behavior of a human. In this case, they're given the ability to speak. Um, and, and we see that the wheat is actually quite excited by the moon because it allows them to fulfill their role um, of being harvested and to, to feed and to provide for others. Um, but within what they say, we of course see darker connotations. So if we think about the connotations of reap, we often always think of the grim reaper um, in death coming to find us. Um, and that alliteration and the consonants actually really accentuates the cry. Um, so there's a juxtaposition within even what they're saying and how it's said. Um, and of course, that is also juxtaposed in the final line of the stanza and the rivers sweat from the melting hills. So there we get that sense of fear once again. Um, juxtaposing how the wheat feels about the, the coming of the harvest moon. So if we consider the form, the meter and the rhyme, so the form, the, the four stanzas, they vary in length. So we have quite a long, um, we have an octave for the first stanza, eight lines, uh, followed by two stanzas of four lines and finishing up with that short uh, three, sta three sentence line. Um, so this is obviously written in free verse, but it does have some rhyme. Um, and I mean, we understand that in the case that it was written for children, but also we see a, a breakdown of the rhyme scheme as well, which we'll talk about later. But we have to consider how that changes as we move through the poem. How does it decrease and break down um, as we move from a very playful uh, the playful moon at the beginning and what it seems to bring and then as we move into that darker message about the apocalypse um, <clears throat> and a lot of the sentences are end stop so it really shows how final this this act is um, and it could that could reference the act of the harvest moon of that time of that year but also in thinking more on uh, in considering the apocalypse, how it really is the, the final act um, and the final thing to experience. So the meter doesn't have a set meter. There is some loose rhyme, um, but there are sentences that use iambic pentameter, for example, in line one, three, and six, um, which is quite powerful in mimicking that distant drumming and that sense that something dangerous is approaching. So for the rhyme, as I said, it starts out with quite a consistent rhyme scheme, um, but it does fade over the course of the poem. And, and as I said, that has to link with the, with the story of the poem and how it does become darker as we move through. So finally, I thought I'd leave you with an example essay question that may come up for this type of exam. Um, so this is an essay question that you could... Um, you could write a full analysis on it, or you can make some bullet points and share it in the comments below. Uh, so the question is, how does Hughes strikingly convey the moon in the poem? Um, so leave your comments down below and I'll be sure to, to respond and give you some pointers and, and help direct you. Um, but best of luck for anyone taking the exam and do be sure to like and subscribe for more Ted Hughes poetry. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.